So I just seen a video of 4th Cong Congressional District Congressman Ken Buck from Colorado making a video saying, hey, Joe Biden, hey, Beto O'Rourke, come take my AR-15. <laughs> In the comment section of that little video, there was another video by this uh, Bo of the Fifth Column or some crap like that saying, you need to negotiate, you need to talk him into it using logic and blah, blah. Dude, that ship has sailed. Have you? I mean, wake up. Have you not figured that out yet? That ship has sailed. There's no negotiating with these radical leftists. There's no, hey, let me explain to you the reasons I have guns. Let me explain to you the reasons and the rights that I have to defend myself and my family. There's no, there's no explaining that. There's no logic that they're going to listen to and they're going to be like, oh my God, you just made total sense. Thank you. So no. I'm sorry, it's not. That ship has done sailed. Representative Ken Buck is completely within his rights and within his within his bounds to say, you know what, here's my line in the sand. And by saying that, you know what he's saying to the people of Colorado and everyone else that will listen to him? There's still lawmakers up there willing to make a stand and say, no, we're not going to let that happen. So, Bo of the fifth column, you're stupid. I, I don't, you, you just, no, dude, come on, man. <laughs> That ship has done sailed. There's no way that that you can say that that Ken Buck's inciting violence. That he's that he's uh, the the rhetoric is just oh the flag draped coffins or that. I mean, come on, you brought up the the red flag bills. You're right. You know what about them things? Them are unconstitutional as the day is long in the middle of summer. Those things, it doesn't matter. When they come knocking your door in for to take your guns, guess what? You're not going to negotiate with them. You're not going to use logic with them. That's done. It's gone. If they're if they're exercising red flag laws against you, and that they are doing that one at a time, and sure, they're going to get some crazies, but they're going to get a lot of innocent people in that process, too. And let me tell you something. No, you can, you can sit there and use your appeasement thing. Oh, you don't know violence. You don't know. Shut up. Shut up. And of course the rifle didn't have sights on it. It is, it is nothing more than, than a wall hanger right there. Anybody that would uh, think otherwise is, I mean, you would think he's bringing in a, a battle-worn rifle that he's carried over in Afghanistan or Iraq. I mean, come on. You know, everyone knows that he was <laughs> a district attorney in Colorado for years before he ran for the seat that he now sits in. No, he's not no battle-hardened, you know, warrior. But he's making a stand, and he's saying enough's enough. And I respect that, and I appreciate that out of my out of my representatives. And, you know, it's just to roll over and say, no, that's not the right course. Well, tell me. Tell me what logic you're going to use on Beto O'Rourke when he says, hell yes, I'm coming for your AR-15. What logic are you going to use to get him to see that's not right, that, that he doesn't have the right to do that? Tell me what logic. Tell me what logic you're going to use that he's going to just, his eyes are all of a sudden going to be open and he's going to say, you know, as an American citizen, you're right. You do have the right to defend yourself and you have the right to pursue happiness and you have the right to a life that, that is, that is unfettered and un, unattacked by the government. The, the, you know, tell me what logic, because you know what, when a guy is willing to stand on a stage surrounded by fellow leftist liberal nut jobs and say, hell yes, I'm coming for your AR-15. There's no discussing that with him. There's no there's no logic that's gonna pop into his head and be like, oh, that's the key that was that was I was looking for that key because now that fits in that lock and it just totally opened up his mind. I'm sorry, that doesn't happen. Them guys, no, no. And if Joe Biden wants to take him on and say, well, he's my gun gun grabbing czar, well, yeah, that get her done, buddy. I mean, Joe don't even know what day it is, so I'm not too worried about him winning elections. But the point of the matter is, that side is out there in America. That side, that side is is constantly taking little little steps here, little steps there. And if you think that you're going to argue your way into their mind to to uh, open their mind, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, there's there's books out there about arguing with idiots, and there's so much truth to it because you can't, you cannot. There is, there is no way that you can reach them with intelligent thought. There's no way that you can reach them with, with a, a line of, of, of thought that, that will just open up their, their eyes to see what reality is. Because they think that the government can do more for you as a private citizen than you'll ever be able to do for yourself. And the fact of the matter is they need to get the hell out of the way. 
And when they're out of the way, America does great things. When they come in and they encroach and they encroach, whether it's our health care, whether it's our guns, whether it's, you know, any other facet of life that they try to just constantly, just a little bit here, a little bit there, what do they do? They, so, so they completely suppress ingenuity. They, so, they suppress our, all our desires to, to go get something done and get her, you know, get something accomplished, make something of ourselves, which is exactly what they want. They want us all dependent on them for every food piece of food that goes into our mouth, for every little breath of air that we take, for every freedom that we so graciously enjoy. Thank you, dear, dear heavenly government. No, hell no. No. Mm -mm. Sorry, Charlie. I don't know where you come from, Bo of the fifth column, but we don't ask for permission to be freemen. That is not how it works here in America. You don't sit there and say, dear congressman, dear senator, dear president, may I do this or that? No, you know, in the founding of this country, which I'm telling you still to this day, them are the only documents that I will hold an allegiance to, are those founding documents that we were created on. The Constitution, the Bill of Rights, <laughs> the right of all men to be free. I don't have to ask permission and yeah, you want to come for my gun? Come get it. You son of a bitch, I'll show you. I'm done. I'm, I'm fed up with that mentality that you can appease those kind of people. I will live peaceably all of my days until somebody comes and kicks down my door or somebody wants to threaten my country. You know what? That's that's. I have a lot of family members that have served many years in the United States military. I have the utmost respect for them, and I would I would gladly die for them, just as they would have died for me. Because I tell you what, them guys, they're more than you'll ever be, Bo of the fifth column. You know, <laughs> oh, appease them. I mean, my God. No, dude. It don't work that way. It does not work that way. It, it's just, I, I don't know where you think that... that that you get off thinking that, that Ken Buck's inciting violence and he's, no, he's not. He's making a statement saying, this is my line in the sand. You will not come for this because this is my right. And if you do, there will be hell to pay. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's no inciting violence saying that. That's saying, you know what? You punch me in the nose, I'm going to knock your ass out. That's what that's saying. You don't punch me in the nose, we're cool. But if you do punch me in the nose, it's on like Donkey Kong. That's what that's saying. That's not saying, I'm coming to your house, Beto O'Rourke. No, that's not what that's saying. It's not saying, I'm coming to your house, Joe Biden. That's not what that's saying. That's saying, leave me alone. Let me express the rights that I have been given by God, our creator, not by any man wearing a suit sitting in Washington, D.C. or Austin, Texas or Denver, Colorado or any Topeka, Kansas. No, no, those rights were not given to us by those suits. And so what, what Ken Buck's simply saying, you live my life alone, and you're not going to have no problems. You come into my life, you come into my world, you come in to take my stuff to try to encroach on my freedoms, then you're going to have a problem. I don't think that's a hard concept to get. I don't think that's a hard hard uh, reality to, to embrace as, as a freedom-loving American. Now, if you're just a rollover, you know, yellow-bellied piece of crap, yes, you need to appease them. You need to use logic. Mm, no, 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 no. I mean, Joe Biden come out and say 150 million Americans have been killed by gun violence since 2007. You know, I just did a check just a little bit ago, and there's 327.2 million Americans as of 2018 here in the U.S. Now, I'm not real good with math, but that's nearly half of us are dead since 2007. I mean, I personally may be dead and didn't even know it. That's that's how many, I mean, that's that's half of us nearly. So you think that with facts like that, they're going to come knock on your door and you're going to sit them down and explain to them with logic how, you know, my gun is my right and it's, it's, I need to use, you know, my, my voice of persuasion to talk to you, to convince you that somehow that right that God gave me, you shouldn't take. 
Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. No. When they when they all stand up there on their little podiums after they get elected and I do solemnly swear to uphold the you know. You know the thing, as Biden would say. <laughs> they know. And if they don't know, that's because they didn't read it. And that's not my fault. That is not my fault. I read it many times. And I'll read it many more times. Because I tell you what, that system of government works. It's the only system of government that works. Tell me one other form of government that has lasted as long as ours has without the problems. And has done more to help this world that we live in than our system of government. And as long as we would hold true to those founding documents, those founding principles, we're good. But we leave it. We leave it. We think we we think we got to do better. Well, let's, let's let's do this socialism. You know, let's let's free medical care for all. That's not a reality. Nothing is free. There's not one single solitary thing on this planet that is free. It's a goods and services produced by one person for another person for something of value. It's the way it's always going to really work. When you, when you pro provide a good or a service and the government takes it and mandates that you give it to someone else for free, tell me what incentive you have to get up in the morning and go to work. Why should I get up and go bust my butt if all I'm doing is giving all my stuff? Up? Yeah, I might get some groceries or, you know, that's not an equal trade. That's not, there's no, there's no incentive to, uh, to be better, to do, you know, ingenious things, to create cures for cancer, to create, you know, cures for all these other diseases. What you take away the incentive when you take away the profit. And I mean, I'm just sorry. That's the, that's the reality of it. And whenever you're going to tell, tell people that, well, you know, as a doctor, you got to get up in the morning and you've got to uh, go to work all day and, and yeah, we're going to pay you peanuts because we're providing all this free health care for everybody. So we can't really afford to pay you what you're worth. Yeah, I'm going to see a lot of doctors uh, getting out of the practice. You know, and it just it's just insane to think that that those kind of people walk around with that kind of process in their mind that's just constantly oblivious to reality that you could ever sit down and talk to them and, and, and explain to them in any way that they would ever get it that they ain't coming from my guns. And I'm not worried about it because I'm telling you what, number one, Trump 2020, okay? That's going to happen. There is nothing that Biden can pull out of his hat that's going to make enough Americans vote for him that it's not going to be the Trump train 2020, okay? And while I do not agree with everything Trump does, I mean, I'm not him. He's not me. If he was me, he'd be a lot cooler. But he's not. I mean, he's all right. He's all right. But I tell you, you know, there's, there's, so I'm not worried about anybody coming from my guns right now, currently. But just, just the, the appeasement, hmm. <laughs> just, I, uh, Bo from the fifth column, get a clue, dude. Really, I mean, that's stupid.